Hi there, Save the Crypto here. Okay, so last night I put out a video uh, saying that I'd, I was hoping that we would bounce off this trend line once again. Uh, this is looking at it on the three day time frame, and this goes back to like. Um, you know, October last year. And this last bounce was Tuesday. What I was kind of pleased to see was the MACD on the one hour time frame going green. That's good. Um, probably looking for something larger now. So maybe the four hour time frame here, but we won't know about that until another three and a half hours. But zooming in a little bit, you can see here that it did indeed sort of bounce off that trend line that it is now up a little bit the kind of pattern i'm looking at is something like this and a ascending triangle if you look on investopedia.com you can see that it's generally referred to as a continuation pattern so whatever the trend was coming into it's more likely that that trend will continue as it leaves the triangle so what we're looking at here is you know the trend coming in this way and then hopefully breaking out that way so you know, I know people draw like sort of measured moves at the start of the pattern, which I suppose is about there, isn't it? Down to there. So if that was to break out anytime soon, then we'd be looking at levels of around $110,000, which sounds about right to me. I think that's going to be like the peak of this cycle. But to be honest, I'm not really going to be particularly happy until we've got past this area here where the red candle came down last friday and that by the way i think was due to the announcements about the non-farm payroll thing so today we got the fomc meetings tonight at uh, seven o'clock uk times so that's 6 p.m utc so there's that to watch out for uh, i believe the general thoughts is it's either going to be like a nothing burger or it's going to be bad Okay, so I'm not expecting anything too positive out of that. So do be aware that we could possibly see a much bigger dump tonight. What I really want to happen, I really want the price to come back up here to about 70k so that I can get out of my crappy positions that I'm in. Because I'm not helping very much with the competition with the team because I'm actually at number 11, which is pretty rubbish, isn't it? Out of 16 in the team. There are some people who seem to be quite bad. This one here, BG user 4MFJP51P. You've got a trading volume of like a million dollars and you're 93% down. That's a little bit worrying. I hope you're all right. Now, amazingly, this puts us at 309 out of about 1,800 teams. So it's not actually too bad, even though our overall return on investment is 0%. So there must be some bloody awful teams out there who are doing really badly. So overall, not too bad, but, but we need to get positive. We need to get a positive ROI. And for me, that's not going to happen until Bitcoin goes back to 70k, unfortunately. Now, I think it will, but I'm not sure if it's going to be today. And I won't know until we've seen the FOMC results. Now then, I was talking to someone the other day who was talking about this uh, reversal feature here um, in BitGet. Um, now, I think what he was saying is the fact that he was using this so that when a trade wasn't looking good, it wasn't going his way, he was using the reversal thing to sort of change from a long to a short or from a short to a long. And... I don't think he quite understood exactly what's going on here because here's an example of like a really terrible trade, right? I've got a bad entry. Uh, actually, it wasn't too bad, but um, I didn't expect it to dump as much as it has done. So my entry was 69.545. I, I didn't have a stop loss because I'm an idiot. Uh, the price is now 67.380. So it means I'm 30% down in this trade. Okay. Now, that means if I was to close the trade now, I would lose uh, that amount of Bitcoin, which is equivalent to $1,280, which would be quite devastating, right? So I think what this friend was doing, I think he was going, oh, let's reverse it. So uh, I'm not going to do this, obviously, but I'll just show you what would happen. What it says here, it says your position will be closed at market price and opened in reverse for the same amount. If the funds are not sufficient to open the same number of positions, the positions 
will be opened according to the maximum available quantity. Your operation may not be 100% successful due to margin, market conditions and other factors. Okay, so what would happen here if you did that? It would basically change that there from being a long position to a short position. And that would mean that you would straight away lose $1,280. And then if the price didn't go down, it went up instead, you'd be losing more money. Now, the reason somebody might do this is if, say, they go into a, a, a trade and they think they've got the bottom and they go long and the price starts dropping more, then, you know, they switch to a short and hopefully they'll make some money that way. Um, but the problem is if you're in a loss already, you need to make more to get back to where you were. I'll give you an example. So say you've got $1,000, right? And then you lose... 50% of that, okay? So you lose 50% of that, so you've then got $500, yeah? So to get back from $500 to 1,000, what percentage gain do you need? Well, you need 100%, don't you? Let's think about that in a more severe case. Say you've got $1,000 and you lose 90%, you'll have $100 left, okay? So to go from $100 back to 1000 you're going to have to make, I think it's 900% to get back to 1000 So really, this is why you should be using stop losses and things like that, which I must admit I'm terrible at. So say you have $1,000 and you lose 10%, that means you have left $900. So then to get from 900 back to 1,000, you actually only need, it's actually 11.1111 reoccurring. You need 11.11% increase to get back to 1,000. This is something I need to get straight in my head as well because it's really easy to lose 50%. It's very hard to gain 100%. But if you lose 10%, it's fairly easy to gain 12%, which will put you ahead. So make sure you understand what you're doing if you're using that reversal thing. The only time I do do it is sometimes if I'm well in profit with a trade and I think this is getting near the top, I might try a, a small short. But if that doesn't play out, then at that point I'll think, okay, it's not going to come down. I'll just reverse the trend on that small amount and then it adds it into the long that it's already going and it just becomes part of the bigger trade. But this reversal thing is something you shouldn't use just because you've made a mistake. If you made a mistake, the best thing to do, come out of the trade, accept the loss and then look seriously for a new position. Because if you think about it, if you've gone long but the price drops, and you think, oh no, I've made a mistake, I should have gone short, then at that point you're chasing a red candle. Same as if you were short and the price starts going up and you think, oh no, I should have gone long, you reverse it and then you're chasing a green candle. And I know for a fact that some of my worst trades have been when I've FOMO'd into a trade because I've gone long because I've seen a big green candle or I've gone short because I've seen a big red one. Really, you should be doing the opposite. None of this is financial advice, by the way. I'm not a brilliant trader and I've only been trading a few years. So, um, you know, do your own research and just don't risk too much, okay? Anyway, it looks like uh, we're getting a little bit of a increase there. So up to 67878. So I don't know, maybe it will follow my idea like that. Who knows? Anyway, I hope you learnt something there. The percentages thing isn't quite as obvious as it first seems, is it? So, uh, yeah, if you like that, please give the video a like and uh, make sure you are subscribed and you've got the notifications set on all. Uh, any questions, leave a nice comment. Or any questions, leave a comment. Or leave a nice comment. And above all, tell your friends.